Ladies and gentlemen, it's another month, and it's time for another look at Clockwork Empire's latest monthly patch, since uh, that is all I do here. Right, so Clockwork Empires has been releasing more or less monthly uh, rebuilds. Uh, this one, Alpha 43, you can see in the upper right there, was released a day and a half ago, or whatever, last Wednesday, by whatever day you happen to see this video. Um, and yeah, so those of us in the Early Access program have been testing the hell out of it and reporting and finding things broken and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the new stuff. So I'm going to start a new game here. One thing uh, we'll notice right away is that the 21 colonists start, which uh, was always experimental, right? Like this Friends in High Places start, uh, has been removed. So it has been replaced by the Instant Colony which is a slight variation on the uh, basic starter, uh, basic colony starter pack. So the first two here, the first one is used to be just default when there was no loadout. It, this was just the one you would get. So it's, uh, you know, basic number of overseers, uh, one soldier and three days of food and some basic building materials. The advanced colony starter pack uh, gives you more advanced materials like an iron ingot and, um, but less food and um, a pistol, I guess. So this one, the instant colony is a slight variation on that. It gives you uh, more timber and more stone so you can start building those basic structures immediately. And some more workers, but only one day of food. Uh, I actually like this one. Actually, this is the one I now prefer to start with because I can start, in my previous games, I would build a carpentry and then I'd just wait and wait and wait until I had enough materials to build my next building. Uh, with the instant colony, I can start building the first couple of buildings immediately. Uh, the issue there is there's less food, so I have to also start uh, my food production sooner, which uh, which is fine. That's you know something you take into account. Um, but let's get this one started. Uh, for those of you who um, for whom this is just the first video and you're just checking out Clockwork Empires as you heard about it on Steam or wherever, um, it's a colony building simulator. The setting is kind of alternate history, Victorian England, except it's not England. And uh, yeah, it's, but the aesthetic is there. Uh, you have red coats, you have burly men with uh, waxed mustaches. You have ladies in frilly petticoats. Uh, you have men in stovepipe hats. And you have all the classist suffering of good old, uh, <laughs> Good old Britain in the 1800s. Queen Victoria was alive in. See, Queen Victoria died in 1860, so the Victorian era is about 1800. Yeah, yeah. Then there was the Edwardian era. Never mind. So I'm going to start a colony with the instant colony here. Uh, let's start in the jungle. For variety. Actually, no, let's start it in the temperate biome. I'm hoping I will be able to show you some of the new stuff. A word of warning here, uh, there's still a slight audio bug in the game where when we transition from this loading screen into the actual game screen, there's a burst of noise. It's uh, it's not as bad as it used to be, actually. Um, it may blow out your eardrums. Just warning you a little bit ahead of time. So, what's new in this revision? Well, a bunch of stuff. No, that wasn't too bad. Oh, uh, because uh, this thing is new, the welcome screen, among other things. So you have, uh, it, the, the way it used to be, uh, every new game uh, used to pop up the tutorial, or this screen would be the tutorial screen, and then there was a button to skip it or go through the tutorial. But now there's a checkbox in the embarkation screen, the one we just left, where you can just uh, enter the game without uh, tutorial. But this is the screen you get if you disable the tutorial. This welcome message is actually randomized, so or procedurally gener generated. So every time you start a new game and skip the tutorial, you get this procedurally generated welcome message, the fine details of which will be shuffled around. Um, just a fun little thing. Now it is time to bring delicious cabbage stew to the colonies. In glory to the empire. So I'm just going to start off the colony here. This actually doesn't look too bad. There's plenty of wood. I'm a little bit concerned because there's only, well, that's not too bad. There's some stone here. Not to mention all the stone at my actual landing site. 
So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start building. Now if we look at the commodities, we'll see that I actually started with a bunch of rough stone and a bunch of logs. Whereas I would have I would have neither of those things in the traditional default colony start. What would be a good place for the colony? Uh, here seems fine. What this means is, uh, well, the influence is twofold, right? First, I can have more buildings, or I can begin construction on more buildings simultaneously. Also, uh, it means my workers who are, uh, workers don't need to spend time harvesting the resources to build those buildings, in this case, specifically timber and stone, so they can be constructing my buildings. So we're off to a fast start. Ooh, this is a nice patch of berries right here. I would not normally queue up both a carpentry and a kitchen, but uh, I think it's appropriate this time because I have the materials and I have the workers. I always like to start my colonies off with, let's say, a minimum of two stone ovens, maybe even three because I've got so much stone in abundance here. Uh, one thing the appearance of livestock, always, or livestock, wildlife always reminds me of is that I need to hunt them for their meat, which in turn means I go to my soldiers, who are the only ones who have guns, and I allow them to hunt by turning on this option in the job filter. Oh, by the way, this, uh, this row of buttons here underneath, they don't correspond to the job filters at, on top, these are actually times of day when they're allowed to be active, so I will get back to that in a second. That's a new thing with this uh, with this revision. So there's always been a day-night cycle, right? But it used to be very abrupt. It would be like daylight, and then um, the day-night cycle was like six minutes of day to one minute of night or something like that. As soon as the sunset, bam, it was immediately night and dark. And people would um, people would do things. Uh, according to what time of day it was. So people were less likely to work and more likely to gossip and stand around and socialize and stuff at night. And vice versa, during the day they would get back to their jobs. Time, as I mentioned, I'm going to set up the farm. Oh, I have a lot to talk about crops. So uh, maybe I'll save that for episode two of this series. Just so, you know, if you're just here to <laughs> hear about the new stuff, um, you don't have to bore yourself to death by listening to me talk about crops. Crops saw some fairly significant revisions. It, I, I think <laughs> the food mechanics are really the heart and soul of the, like they're the, they're the heart and soul of the early game because they determine um, primarily your colony's ability to survive and how robust it is in face of famine and bandit attacks and stuff. Um, okay, so I've got the basics done. Uh, I can wait for the columns to uh, get this stuff built. Where are you going? I know I didn't uh, assign a job out here. Oh, I think what's going on is they've detected meat. Um, in the parlance of the forums, this is known as forest meat. That is to say, the meat of a slaughtered animal that you did not personally slaughter. This, this Orox could have died from a fox attack or whatever, like a fishman attack. And what happens is your colonists say, oh, there is raw steak somewhere. I better pick it up and take it to the colony, which is cool and all, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes me unintuitively means they wander way the heck out of town um, because they've detected there's meat somewhere off in the like unexplored blackness. Um, th that is... The colonists have become, or I should say, the game has become better at uh, managing those weird edge situations where this was a problem because, like, bandits had killed it, and now your colonists are all marching to their death to retreat it from, like, the camp of a hostile bandit group. Uh, oh, good job, Elsa Cole Scuffle. He's killed Got a whole lot of steak. Right, back to the workers. So, these buttons, which I'm actually not going to mess with right now, because I'm fine with the shifts being the way they are. These are your uh, these are these are the work cycles. So, for each um, 
segment of the day. So we have dawn, you know, early morning, noon, dusk, uh, mid, uh, you know, night. You can specify whether a given crew is active or not. Now, whether or not you want your carpentries, carpenters to be working at midnight for some reason, that's up to you. But columns do like to sleep at night, so I don't recommend you mess up their sleep schedules too much. They get grumpy if they, are, they don't sleep at reasonable times. Where this might be useful is if you have, say, multiple military crews, and then you can have one sleeping during the day and active at night, and vice versa. Uh, that way, your colony doesn't meet with woe when beetles start destroying your crops in the middle of the night and all your soldiers are sleeping, for instance. So here I've started with a uh, pumpkin, and hopefully this will sustain, this, this, we should be fine. In addition to the pumpkin that this field produces, uh, we've also scrounged up, we, we were fortunate, we, there was a whole bunch of uh, aurochs and berries nearby. So that should sustain us in the short term. We have consumed all the timber and most of the, most of the rock, the stone that we came with. So, uh, actually should have done this first. Let's mark these for harvesting. Uh, yeah, so, uh, the object of Clockwork Empires, for those new to the game, is to, uh, is basically for your colony to survive. You're, you're a colonial bureaucrat and you've been tasked with establishing a colony on some far distant shore. Uh, this particular colony is, uh, New Antipodia, it's rolling grasslands and like pine trees and uh, what is this, an aspen. The other biome currently in game is in a jungle. It's a swampy jungle with like broadleaf trees and pools of water and like weird fungal growths growing out of the ground, which is kind of gross, but it's important because you have to eat those. That's all you have to eat. Well, I shouldn't say it's all you have to eat, but it's an important source of your food. Okay, so, new stuff in 43. Uh, work shifts, that's an important one. You may have observed that the, the light in the map transitions very gracefully to nighttime. It, in fact, you may not have noticed, you may just go back about 10 seconds in the video and you'll see. Uh, we are now in early dusk, or just getting into night. Uh, lighting effects were added to the game. And then there's a nice dawn effect when the sun rises again the next day. I think that's the sort of thing that really shows off the strengths of a 3D uh, a game built on a 3D engine. right? Um, you can compare it to, like, a lot of the simulator, simulation type games of this ilk. Uh, here I think of, and they're all very, very worthy uh, games in their own respects, right? Uh, Prison Architect, um, like Dwarf Fortress. Uh, there's some. There are a couple of dwarf-themed colony games, uh, like Nomoria. They uh, they don't. They tend to be uh, very simplistic in the graphic arena, and uh, a lot of them are like 2D sprite-based, or even if they're kind of, uh, they're, even if they're isometric, they're still not. Um, truly 3D. Anyway, I think this game um, is very good uh, in terms of graphic sophistication. Each of these is a 3D animated model. Uh, the, everything is fully rotatable. Uh, there are complicated shaders and lighting and reflections and things like that. All of which is, is cool. Right? It makes the game very nice to look at. Uh, yeah. So an, uh, another thing the game has seen where area where the game has seen significant work is once again in the stockpile. Stockpile code has seen a lot of work lately. Um, and now the rules for stacking and the rules for carrying things to stockpile, they, they've been refined, debugged. They work a lot better now. And in fact, this one stockpile I've drawn out here might last me the majority of the game until the colony gets really humongous. Then I might have to make another one. If you'll remember many of the earlier videos, I used to have humongous stockpiles. Like at the start of the game, I would have two stockpiles of this size, one for food and one for everything else. 
Now just this one stockpile might be enough, and that's because of the way stacking works now. Colonists who are not doing anything else will intelligently stack things, or yeah, stack stocks into piles. Right, so this is actually a pile of 11 lingonberries, and this, yeah, well, this is a whole bunch of steak. And when the rocks and the stones get quarried, and when, oh, we've been visited by fishmen. Basically, when stuff gets collected now, it's stacked intelligently, so it doesn't take up a giant amount of space. Oh, and here we are at an autosave. So we've been visited by the fishmen. And you can always tell who the fishman leader is, uh, because he's the one wearing the hat. In this case, this fine fellow who is just ducked behind a tree, he's wearing a puffer fish. Just, okay, if you'll move, uh, take my word for it. So here's the dialogue tree. I can choose how to deal with them. So I can uh, try peaceful negotiations or shoot on sight or just ignore the problem and let the columns do with them as they will. I'm going to try for peaceful relations right now. I can change that later. But for now, because I have only one soldier, uh, I don't want to make them mad. Right, I think, I imagine this is what uh, maybe Cortez was like when he first arrived in uh, Mexico, I believe it was. Yeah, it was Pizarro who landed in uh, South America. Yeah, yeah, anyway. So, Cortez arrives in Mexico. He's like, the very first day, I'm sure he was like, let's not piss off the indigenous peoples quite yet. There will be time later to slaughter them and, you know, loot gold and uh, burn their temples and things. But for now, uh, while we are still trying to establish a foothold in our new colony, we can be polite to them. So, yeah, uh, let's not bother the fishmen yet. Um, another thing that has seen work, in addition to the uh, stockpiles, is the workshop code. Now, um, workshops are a bit... Oh, okay, actually, here's something I can show you. If we look down left here, there's a buildings button. This is to subdivide. It used to be that each of these categories of buildings was in one giant menu, which uh, they've been split up into these three sub-menus, which, you know, they're kind of functionally the same, but it makes a lot more sense. It's easier to find a specific building, and for a new player who has not memorized every possible construction yet, um, it's much less intimidating. So here are the workshops. The workshops are buildings where, uh, in fact, I should already have assigned a work crew to do jobs, like make planks. So I've just assigned Aesop, Aesop Steelworth's crew to make planks. And so we here we see Aesop. Shouldn't there be a P in his name? Uh, sawing a log into a plank. And we need planks for practically every construction beyond your most basic uh, buildings. Now the default job filters for somebody, um, a crew that's just been assigned to a workshop is for them not to do anything else but work in that workshop. But because I don't need planks all the time, I just need planks some of the time, I'm gonna say, you can go ahead and keep doing all the little incidental jobs and just get to making planks, you know, most of the time. But when stuff needs hauling or mining or whatever, and you're not busy making planks, uh, you're allowed to do those. That's what the lighter button means. This type of job has been enabled. I leave hunting disabled. Uh, be, typically because enabled to hunt, it requires, it typically requires a colonist to chase wildlife a long way away. And if they don't have a gun, either they have to find a gun or they try to punch it to death with their fists, which can take a long time. So it's best to leave hunting to people who already have guns as a time-saving measure. And um, personally, I you generally leave my soldiers not doing these other jobs so that A, they're ready to react in case of an attack, and B, they're always free for hunting. So there you go, win-win. Uh, yes, so the buildings menus. These are the workshops. These are the shops in which you assign a crew and then inside that crew, you assign a job. And if that job needs doing and they're not busy doing something else, they will produce that good. Offices are a different type of building. So we have here like the, the chapel and the mine are probably buildings you may have, rec you'll, have you'll recognize from previous videos. 
And those are buildings that uh, you still have to assign a work crew to them, but you don't, they just produce things automatically on their own, or they don't take an input and turn it into an output. So like the mine produces ore, but you don't put anything into it. The workers just go there and then they bring out ore. In the chapel, uh, people just go there to pray and the, the vicar just goes there to preach, that sort of thing. Um, and so for that reason, they're a different category of building. So uh, those have seen, basically it's, it's back end stuff. It's not public facing uh, code, script, I guess in this case. But what it means is that uh, it's, it's less buggy and it works a little bit more intuitively now. And then the third category is housing, right? We have the three types of housing, lower, middle, and upper class housing, uh, which is best suited for those respective classes of colonists. I've just got a new overseer. So uh, a bit of an abrupt uh, cut here. And that's because I recorded the first episode in its entirety and I realized it ran like 40 minutes long. So I've cut it in half. Uh, there's part one, which you're watching right now. Part two, which is going up very shortly as well. If you're, um, if that's enough for you, you can just watch one and you know not watch the other one immediately. But if you want to, it's there. So it's your option. Um, my name is Alfred. I've been playing Clockwork Empires. Uh, on the occasion of the release of Alpha 43, which is Gaslamp Games' monthly release to the stable build. Now, the game is in early access. It's uh, still got bugs. There's a whole bunch of content that isn't in yet. Uh, you know, not everything is working perfectly. Uh, but I hope the game has... Uh, I hope this video has given you some idea where development is at and whether or not, you know, this is something you might want to get in on or you just want to check it out and see... This is the sort of game that is interesting to you. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks very much for watching this one, and have a good one.